Welcome to the Elements of Science. I'm Abigail from the Mind Academy and RKE, and today's topic is neuroplasticity, because your brain is a dynamic and constantly changing organ. It is not the same now as it was one year ago. In fact, it's not even exactly the same now as it was one minute ago. Your brain has a property called neuroplasticity, which means its ability to reorganize itself and adapt to an ever-changing environment. The brain needs neuroplasticity to grow, to heal from damage, and to learn and form new memories, like you're doing right now. In the brain, plasticity manifests itself in different ways. Neurons can form new connections with each other and also strengthen or weaken old ones. And your brain does this constantly. Neurons can change their physical shape to connect to other cells or to delete connections that haven't been activated in a while. This is the biological version of use it or lose it. And by the same token, neurons that fire together, wire together. Connections you use more often get stronger. When you learn or experience something new, you're forging new neural pathways. And the more you reinforce this learning, the stronger they get. Children's brains adapt and learn particularly quickly because plasticity peaks in childhood. Neurons can't only change their structure, they can also change their function in response to the environment. So for example, if a patient has a stroke that damages particular brain regions, other neighboring regions may actually start to take over the functions of the damaged region as the person recovers. The brain cannot regrow, but it can rewire. And you don't have to have a stroke to experience this. Your brain is rewiring itself, its structure and its function when you learn anything. And I use learn in the broadest sense possible. For example, when people learn to play the violin, they start to use their left hand in new and more dexterous ways. And the brain regions devoted to the left hand actually grow larger as someone gets better. And whatever you're good at, your brain reflects it too. Finally, neuroplasticity is related to the growth of new cells, called neurogenesis for neurons. In human adults, this happens in the hippocampus, which is your memory center, and it may also happen in the striatum and olfactory bulb, although the scientific jury is still out on those two. All three facets of neuroplasticity can become impaired or dysregulated in certain neurological and psychiatric disorders, including depression and anxiety. And because loss of neuroplasticity accompanies these disorders, some scientists have been wondering if promoting neuroplasticity in the affected brain regions could help patients. According to their theory, which is still just a theory, a more plastic brain might help patients respond better to therapy. It may change their ability to change and make it easier to develop healthy patterns of thought and behavior. Ketamine and certain psychedelics may have some potential here, but there's still a long way to go before scientists can say for certain which substances, if any, can safely and effectively promote neuroplasticity and whether this also reduces symptoms in patients. Meanwhile, research also shows that a stimulating environment and healthy lifestyle may do as much to promote neuroplasticity as any medicine. To learn more about the science of neuroplasticity, you can check out these publications. And if you want to know more about the connection between neuroplasticity and psychedelics, read through our blog article at mindfoundation.org slash blog slash neurons on acid. See you next time on the Elements of Science.